This is how you can make a server join log system for your discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you could go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also have a brand new bot tier, which gives you a full zip file of the exact bot used in these videos. We also offer four bot packages based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the code. All right, so to start, let's go over to events and we're gonna go ahead and create a guild join log. Js. We're gonna get events, we can get a button builder, we can get our embed builder, we can get button style, we can get action row builder, we can get component type, we can get channel type, and then we can do equals require, and we're gonna go ahead and get our discord.js package. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do module.exports. We can go ahead and get our name, which is going to be events, and we can do guild create. We're gonna add a comma, we're gonna do async executes, we're gonna execute our guild and our client, then we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to start off by saying if no guild, then we're just going to go ahead and return. Because obviously if there's no guild, then there was an error, so we're just going to do nothing. Then we're going to do const send channel, and we can do equals await client.channels.fetch. And we're going to go ahead and fetch the channel that we want to send it in. I would recommend going over to a Discord server that is like a bot testing server, maybe a you know private server for you and your developers, and choose a channel that you want to send it in, copy that ID, go back over to your code, and then go ahead and paste it. But this should be a private channel only only for the developers. Next, we can go ahead and get all of our variables. So we're gonna do const name equals guild.name. We can do const ID equals guild.id. We're gonna go ahead and do const owner equals awaits. And we can do guild.members.fetch. And we can go ahead and get our guild.owner ID. Then we're gonna do const member accounts equals await guild.members.cache.size. We can do const bot counts equals, and we can do awaits, and we can do guild.members.fetch. So we're gonna fetch the members. And then we're gonna go ahead and filter the members and we're going to filter them by the member and we can do member.bot actually we're going to do member.user.bot and then we're going to do .size then we can do const client guild accounts equals and we can do await client.guilds.cache.size and finally we can do const join time equals i'm going to open this up and we can do an arrow we can do t and we can do a colon and we can go ahead and do math.floor and we can do date.now and then we're going to do divided by 1000 and then we can go ahead and do another colon. We can do R and we can finish that arrow off. That's going to go ahead and create a timestamp based off of the time that we actually joined the guild so that later if you look in, you can see how long ago you actually joined. So now we're going to go ahead and write out our embeds. So we're going to do const embed equals new embed builder. And we're going to go ahead and start off by just setting a color. And I'm going to go ahead and make this blurple. We can go ahead and set a title. And this is just going to be a globe emoji. And we can go ahead and say new server join. Then we're going to go ahead and add some fields. We're going to get our name, and this is going to be server name. And our value is just going to go ahead and be backslash tick. And we can go ahead and get our name variable. We're going to do backslash ticks again. So we're going to add a bunch of fields. So we can just copy this, and we're going to go ahead and paste it. This is going to be a server ID, and this can be our ID variable. We're going to go ahead and paste it again. This is going to be server owner. And within this, we're gonna get our owner, and then we're actually gonna go ahead and do user, and then we do dot username. So we're gonna get the username. We can come outside of that. We're gonna open up parentheses, and we can go ahead and get our owner.id. Then we're gonna go ahead and get our member count. So we're gonna say server member counts. And all we have to do is pass in our member count variable. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get our bot count. So we can go ahead and say server bot counts. And again, we're just going to go ahead and pass in our bot count variable. We're going to go ahead and get our server join time. And we could go ahead and say join time or we could say timestamp. So I'm just going to say join timestamp. And within this, we're going to go ahead and get our join time. And we're actually going to have to remove the backslash ticks because we can't have it within that if you want this to work. So finally, we're going to go ahead and set a description. And we can just go ahead and say this. And we can go ahead and say is my, we can do backslash ticks, we can do our client guild counts. We can finish that off and we can say server that I am in. We can also say use the button below to fetch the invite link to this guild. All right, so after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and set a footer and we can get our text and I'm just gonna go ahead and get a mail emoji and all we have to say is server join logs, pretty simple. Then we can go ahead and set a timestamp to finish that embed off. Now we're going to go ahead and write out our system to actually go ahead and get the link uh, so we can join the server if we wanted to. So we're going to do const button equals new button builder. And we're going to go ahead and set a custom ID. This can be fetch invite for join. 
we're gonna go ahead and set a label and I'm just gonna go ahead and get an emoji so we can do the mail emoji and we can go ahead and say fetch invite finally we're gonna go ahead and set a style and that is going to be our button style that danger now we're gonna go ahead and do const row equals new action row builder and we're gonna add our components and this is going to be our button component because we've already made the button uh, we're just adding it to the row the reason we're doing this is because later in the collector we're gonna go ahead and set the button to disabled and it has to be a separate variable for that to work so now we can do const message equals await send channel and we can do dot send we're gonna get our embeds and we can get our embed and we're also gonna go ahead and get our components and that is going to be our row component uh, not the button component um, and then we're going to go ahead and just catch an error just in case something goes wrong we can just do nothing now we're going to do var time and this is going to be 300,000 milliseconds which is going to be five minutes so now we're going to go ahead and do const collector equals await message to create message component collector and we can open this up we're going to get our component type and get our component type dot button and then we're also going to go ahead and pass in our time variable just like that all right so after we do that we can go ahead and turn this on so we can do collector dot on we're going to go ahead and collect and we can do async i and then we can open this up we're going to start off by saying if and we can do i dot custom id is equal to our fetch and we can do invite for join so that's going to be the custom id of the button we created above make sure you get that exact custom id you used otherwise this won't work we're going to go in and do var channel and then we can go ahead and say const channels equals await guild dot channels dot cache dot filter we're going to filter our c and we can do c dot type and we're going to check to see if that type is equal to our channel type dot guild text now, if it is, we're going to handle that. So to do that, we can say for, and we're going to do const c of, and we can do channel, and we can say dot values. So we're going to do our channel dot values, and then we can open this up. So we're going to say channel, and we're going to go ahead and do equals c, and then we're going to go ahead and break after we set that. So essentially what we're doing here is we're checking our values, and if we have a channel that is a guild text channel, then we're going to go ahead and set the channel variable to that and we're going to go ahead and break out of the loop so the first channel that we find within the server that meets these requirements here is going to be set to our channel variable and then we're just going to go ahead and break so once we have our channel to create the invite from we're going to say if no channel and we could go ahead and do return awaits and we can do add our reply and we can say contents now we're going to go ahead and get our caution emoji and we can just go ahead and say i could not find a channel in this guild to create an invite with just like that and we're also going to go in and set informal to true now this happening is pretty unlikely because chances are what's going to happen is there's going to be a guild text channel in the server but for some reason if there's not we're just going to go and return you could remove this parameter if you want to but the problem with that is it's going to find any channel so if the first channel it finds is a voice channel then it's going to create a voice channel and that's kind of annoying so let's just keep it as guild text then we're going to do const invite equals await channel that create invites and we're also going to go ahead and catch an error for some reason if this doesn't work it's helpful to have that error catch then we can say await i dot reply and we're going to get our contents and i'm just going to go ahead and get an arrow emoji this time and we can go ahead and say here's the invites to and we can go ahead and say guild or i guess we can just say name and then we can go ahead and get our HTTPS. We can go ahead and get discord.gg slash. And we can do our invite.code. We're also going to go ahead and set informal to true on this reply as well. Because we want to keep that consistent throughout all of our replies. Now that we're done with this collector, we can actually go ahead and get out of it. And we're going to go ahead and end the collector. So we can do collector.on. We can do end. And we can go ahead and open up an unnamed function. Within this, we're going to do button. And we can go ahead and set it to disabled. We're also going to go ahead and set our embed dot set footer. So we're going to set the footer and do text and we're going to get the exact same footer that we got above. So it's going to be join logs or I think we did server join logs. And then we can do a dash and we can go ahead and say the invite fetch has expired. So we're going to just notify the embed that you can no longer use the button. And we're going to do away msg.edit and we can get our embeds. We're going to get our embed and we can also get our components which is going to be our row component, just like that. All right, so with that, we are actually done with this entire system. So let's go ahead and save these files, restart the bot, and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord server, let's go ahead and join a different server within my bot. So 
I'm going to go ahead and authorize it and just go ahead and join a different server. Now, as you can see, as soon as I join that server, it's going to go ahead and give me a new server join message. It's going to say this is my sixth server that I'm in. And it's going to go ahead and give me all of my information, the server name, the server ID, the server owner, the member count, and the server bot count. Now, the one thing that I did do that I would encourage you to do as well is in the server bot count area, um, just add a one to the bot count variable. And the reason for that is because uh, in the bot count, it's not actually counting the bot itself that just joined. So if you add one, you're including the bot that just joined the server. That is why this number is updated for me and maybe not updated for you. So that's why I would go ahead and add one to your bot count. The other thing that you're going to see is a timestamp that shows when I joined the server. So that's important to know. So let's just go ahead and try to join one more time so we can go ahead and test out the invite. I had to restart the bot to actually apply the server bot change. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-invite it to the server and we can go ahead and test it out again. Now, as you see here as soon as we join we're going to go ahead and get a brand new server now it's going to say the same number because we left and rejoined the server but it's going to give me all of that information as well as timestamp and everything is going to stay consistent let's go ahead and try to fetch the invite this time so as you can see if we go ahead and click on fetch invite it's going to say here is the invite to and then the server name and then it's going to give me the invite so that's pretty cool it generates an invite that you can join as the developer of the bot this is kind of unethical so just keep that in mind your bot is creating an invite without getting permission so that's why I encourage this to be a private thing only for developers and not for actual users of the bot. So now let's go ahead and wait about five minutes for the button to actually expire. And it's going to go ahead and gray out just so that if the bot were to go ahead and crash, then the button is already grayed out. So if somebody were to click it, we're not going to get an error. It's just kind of a preventative measure to make sure that you don't error your bot or make it look bad or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and wait for the timestamp to change to five minutes and then we will have a grayed out button. All right, and as you can see now, five minutes later or seven minutes for me, cause I waited a little bit longer, the button is gonna go ahead and gray out. So the whole embed is actually gonna be edited and it's gonna go ahead and say the invite fetch has expired and then we're no longer able to click on that button. So I have an example up here. The reason why we're doing this like described before is if we go ahead and click on this example, nothing's gonna happen because the bot crashed and I restarted it before it could gray out. So the whole point of this is like, technically the idea is the bot's not gonna crash within the five minutes that the button is still active. So once it's grayed out, then no longer can this interaction fail to actually happen. So as you can make an advanced guild join logging system for your discord.js version 14 bot, if you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here. And we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.